Hello, I'm glad you could connect in. Welcome to St Andrew's Church. We're actually in our building for the sermon today. And it's Easter, so I wish you a very happy Easter. We'll come to that. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be guided by God, our Father, Jesus, Saviour, and the Sacred Spirit. Amen. I started writing this sermon on Maundy Thursday, and I was feeling sad and not joyful. Not just sad because of Maundy Thursday, sad because COVID seems to be much harder this year than last year. It has been a long journey and it is not over. This time last year we could hope and pray next year in Jerusalem and mean next year in St Andrew's church building. But the year has come and we are in Covid still and not in our building. On Thursday, I should have been preparing for our Maundy Thursday service, uh, one of my favourite services of the year, for the community gathering and the bittersweet emotions of that day. On Friday, I should have been expecting the deep sadness of Good Friday and the Stations of the Cross. On Sunday, I should have been welcoming you with a joyful shout of Alleluia! Christ is risen! And instead, we have to manage with online services, which have been good, but it's not the gathering of the people of St Andrews that we want. I'm sad. I'm missing you all, and I'm sure that you are sad. And I, and I'm sure you, to some extent, are not feeling the joy of Easter. And curiously, that puts us in exactly the right place for our Gospel reading today. Because the story we heard from St Mark's Gospel is not one of joy and celebration. It's a story of sadness and terror. Three women come to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. They are sad because Jesus is dead. They don't know how they will get into the tomb to do the anointing they so want to do. But they arrive and they find the tomb already open and a being inside. Now they are afraid. And the being gives them, some, gives them a message, and they are more afraid. They are described as trembling with terror. The women are so overwhelmed by what they have seen that they do not pass on the message. And who would have believed them anyway? Women of those days were not believed by men. So the resurrection remains a secret, at least at the end of the reading that we have. And that is where Mark's original gospel ends, at least according to the scholars. No resurrection appearances, just a message to go to Galilee, a message that doesn't get passed on. St. Mark's Gospel is full of secrets, secrets about Jesus, and this is the final one. But the angel's words are in those three women's hearts. He is not here. He is risen. In spite of their fear, the women shared the message, and the disciples heard and saw 
and believed. The disciples returned to Galilee from Jerusalem after Jesus' death and the word got out. The secret spread. Other disciples saw the resurrected Jesus as Paul tells us. The words of the message were shared. He is not here. He is risen. And this secret became the life force of a movement, the Jesus movement, in Jerusalem and Galilee and throughout Israel and wider and wider in the Roman Empire. The secret spread, the knowledge multiplied and communities grew. More and more people came to know what those three women were the first to hear. He is not here. He is risen. It was dangerous knowledge. Knowledge that could get you killed for passing it on. But the blood of martyrs was the soil of a mighty movement. A movement that conquered an empire and defined the civilizations that followed based on these seven words. He is not here. He is risen. And now the voice is quiet again. At least in our small corner of the world. We have COVID to fear. And the Christian community seems small. At least much smaller than it used to be. But these seven words, which those three women heard and shared, are still the source of our strength. These seven words, this secret, is what keeps us going. These seven words are the secret of our heart. He is not here. He is risen. So in spite of the third wave of COVID and our social separation and the challenges we each face, together we can affirm in our homes and wherever we are, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. And that knowledge can carry us through however long this journey is, however long our journey is, because we are a Sunday people. We are an Easter people. We are a resurrection people. We are a people who know whatever else is happening around us, he is not here. He is risen. Amen.